Okay, so today we're going to take a look at how we can create an RTS movement system. This is going to help you in your freelancing career. Right now we can just select these game objects, but we cannot move them. And you might learn how to handle various game objects and how you can move game objects using a formation system, which we'll learn in the, in the lecture today. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to go to our script called camera ray cast for detection. And over here, I found an error and I'm going to try to search for it. And over here, we're adding this game object right here. So in the selected game object, you can see over here that we are just adding them. But the problem with our current system is that we can add an unlimited number of game objects. And this is basically a problem. Now, the reason why this is a problem is because this for each loop can run multiple times. So what we'll do is we're just going to have an if statement over here. If selected game objects dot contains uh, the player game object already, then we are going to continue because we don't want this to run. So if the selected game object, if this list already contains this game object that we are trying to process, we're not going to add it again. So this is actually a problem that I should have detected in the previous lecture, but I did not. And that could have caused errors. And so we fixed that. Now we can move on to the RTS movement system. So for that, I'm going to create a script. I'm going to call that the RTS movement. So I'm going to go over here inside of scripts. I'll create a C sharp script and this is going to be RTS movement. And I'm going to put this on the main camera. So over here inside of the main camera, I'm going to put this in like that. And we're going to start editing the script. And we are going to put this inside of a namespace. And this is going to be this script will allow us to move our selected units in a formation. OK, so in this script, the camera ray cast for detection, we need to return the value that you see over here. So public list of game object. This is going to be get selected game objects. And we're simply going to return this. So it's going to be like that and selected game objects. This will return the selected game objects that will be selected when the selection box feature is activated. So I'm going to delete all of these functions in the RTS movement. I'm going to start using some variables. So the first variable we're going to take a look at is going to be the, the first variable is going to be the reference to the camera. So private camera, main camera reference. This is a reference to the main camera. So once we have that, now we're just going to go and have a serialized field, private camera raycast. And this is going to be camera raycast for detection. And this is going to be, this is going to be the reference for the camera raycast for detection script. This is the script that we are using for the box selection for the mouse drag to select units feature. And now we're going to have a game object, which is going to store the closest unit. So private game object closest unit. This is going to store the closest unit to the mouse click position. Basically, if we click on on the ground, we want to store the closest unit that is to the mouse position. So for that, we're going to use this. And this is how it's done. So 
Then we need a vector for the current target. So we're just going to insert it over here. And this is how it's going to look like. And we also need a variable for the, we need a list actually. So private list, it's going to be game object. And this is going to be positions relative to closest unit. This is a list that will store the positions of all units relative to the closest unit. It may also contain the position of the closest unit itself, but it will have a zero. Have a, it will have a zero difference in position. I'm going to explain this later. So this, uh, this I'll explain later. Now we need to have a variable which will help us stop the movement when we are changing the, when we are changing the current target position. So when we change the current target position, we also need to stop the current movement routine. So when this is true, it will stop all of the, all of the routines that are required for the movement of the units. There you go. Okay. Now we're just going to create a variable, which we'll call an update. So I'm just going to have shoot ray to detect collision with ground to start movement. Private void. And this is going to be right over here. This will allow us to shoot a ray that will detect collisions with the ground. And I'm just going to create a quick statement right here, which is going to be this. So this is going to be for the right mouse click. And you can see that get mouse button one, get mouse button down is one. So this is going to be for the mouse button one. I'm going to select I'm going to draw the ray over here like that. And uh, we will basically now check if the ground was hit like that. And over here, we are going to have a small check if we are colliding with the ground. So if we have stop movement to true, we will return. So this will prevent us from double clicking. It will also make sure that uh, we are basically not running this immediately and we need to have stop movement to true so we can stop the previous routine if there was a routine running i will basically i will basically uh explain this when i create the code for this so now we're just going to write this right here so this is going to basically be the current target position is equal to ground was hit. So where, wherever the ray cast hit, we are going to select that point and we will make sure that the Y position is one. Now, the reason for that is because the Y position, it's one for all of the, for all of the, uh, capsules or the units that we have. Now in a normal RTS game, you might also have terrain. So you will have to write your, your, your movement code. And uh, right now we don't have that, but for terrains and everything, you need to probably use the system that I created previously in the previous lectures and combine it with this for proper movement. So for debugging, uh, remember that we created these lists, we will clear them, but these lists are basically not going to, they're basically, uh, they're not going to be used right now. These are just for debugging. So position relative to closest unit, and number of selected units, I think I don't have that. So we're just going to create this variable. I think I missed it. Yes, I think I missed it. So it's going to be over here, int, private int, private int number, number of selected units. 
this is going to tell the game the number of selected units and remember that uh, this is basically for debugging and current selected units to process so this i also haven't created so you're going to create this this is for debugging it's not it's not for this is not really going to be used right now so we're just going to go over here and create private list of game objects and this is going to be current selected units to process this will store the game objects that we need to process for debugging okay now we will need to create a function which is going to help us first of all let us get the get the information that we require from the other scripts which we're going to get through here so for some reason it's saying get selected game object count okay let me see what got selected there you go and um, you have to put this over here this is fine and this is now it's fine okay all right so now that we have that we're just going to have a small check over here to make sure that we don't run this if we don't have any so if you do not have any number of selected units, if they are, they are zero, or if this list is empty, then we don't really want to run the function that I'm going to basically write right now. So private void find closest. In fact, I'm just going to use this right here. So I'm just going to put this right here. And in order to find the closest unit, we're just going to use this code right here so in order to make sure that we don't have any bugs the closest unit will always start at zero so the first unit that is over here that is going to become the closest unit and this forage loop will make sure that if there is a unit that we find which is closer to the mouse position then we override the closest unit value to make sure that this works properly so this is for the closest unit and we can call this right here where we have this if statement right here and this is going to make sure that we have the closest unit working properly next we're going to have a function called the position relative to closest unit so we're going to make that work and we will have a variable for debugging which we're not going to use and then we will have a simple return if the closest unit is equal equal to null if we haven't found a closest unit which is not really going to happen but i'm just putting this in as it is good practice to have these in your code and if the number of units is is less than one then it means we only have one unit and we don't really want to basically run this basically this is a list so we need to have more than one number of units to process and then we will be able to make this work and this is the for each loop with the closest position to basically get all of the values that we require so there is an error right here this is okay so this has to be a vector tree actually i made a mistake right there okay so okay so here we are and we will get the closest unit position and then we are going to add the difference so you can see over here i can even make this a little bit a little bit uh, easier to read so i can just put over here get the difference between the closest unit and the selected unit so this is the difference and we are going to add the difference so this will make sure that the formation is maintained basically we want to make sure that the formation is maintained and um, we can only do this if we know that uh, if you know the difference between the the di distance between the closest closest unit and the unit that we are currently processing which is selected game object 
So since we have that, now we can basically process this and we will be able to move units into formation. What we will be doing is essentially if we have a target position, let's suppose 1-1, one, one, the other units Okay, so now that we have all of the positions relative to closest unit, we are basically going to have our last function, which is going to first be followed, first be followed by a read-only variable, which will help us move the have have basically it will help us run the routine properly. Now we're going to have the routine, which is going to be written like this and we will have a yield break statement right here and we also need to make sure that the imports are correct because this is i believe it's in systems.collection yeah it is we also need to make sure that we are calling these functions right here so we're just going to make sure that we have the correct order and that's what we'll do so inside of this routine we're first going to take a look at the variable that we need for delaying so this we will delay the movement for a while as if we have updated the target position we want to make sure that this routine first stops if it's running already and then a new routine starts so for that we need to add a delay and this is the code for for moving the moving the game objects, but we haven't written this. So this is going to be the routine that will help us run the movement code for each and every unit. So you can see that this for loop will actually help us run this routine. And this routine is going to look like this. I'm just going to use it right here. So if we have, let's suppose four units, let's suppose, this is going to start four routines that will basically run these units and um, or move these units i apologize and this is how it's going to look like so i'm just going to make it look a bit better uh move it over here move this over there and i believe this is fine and this should be i think i should just use the formatter and i think that the formatter is not really working right now just going to make sure that it looks a little bit good so like that and like that okay now now we are now it looks a bit better okay so this for loop this routine will basically run another routine and this will be for each and every unit and when i'll start writing you'll understand what i what this routine will do so we'll first need to set the movement speed which we will use this to move it and then we'll need a while loop, which will run until we are very close to our target. And once we are, once we have this stop movement to true, we want to break this routine immediately. Now, this is the reason why we have stop movement over here and stop movement all the way up um, over here. So that if we are running a routine already, we want to stop it so that a lot of routines don't run at the same time causing glitches. Now we're going to write the movement code, which we have already done numerous times, which is move towards. Then we are going to return using this. And then we are going to make sure that after the movement wait time, we also stop the movement if the stop movement variable is true. And that's it, that's all that we require. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to go to the ground variable and we need to actually give it the ground tag. Once we have that, I'm going to increase the size of the ground and it's going to be 10 and 10. I'm going to move the main camera to 65 degrees, move it up. So it's going to be around uh, 20. And I'm going to increase the clipping plane so that it you can see the entire ground. And I believe that is all that we require. In fact, I can move it a bit up as well. 25 seems to be okay. I'm going to move this to minus 12. So minus 12.5 like that. I'm going to click play. And let's see if this works. So I'm just going to select all of these units. And of course, I did not pass references. So I'm going to go to this right here. I'm going to drag the main camera into this right here. And the camera raycast for detection over here. Now I'm going to click play. 
and let's see if it works now and it's working and you can see the formation is basically working as I expected you can see that the formation and the distance between the units is also maintained so that is your RTS movement solution you can mix this up with other solutions to create complex movement systems I hope this was useful